So I can't feel. <laughs> All the information that we're giving you is, you know, based off of our relationship, and it's not going to be the same for everybody else. We are simply making this video to try and get some information out there and kind of just open the, open the roots for people to to talk to each other about it and to kind of uh, give them a place to, to, you know, get some information and realize that it's, you know, with media and movies and things nowadays like they you know sex is such a a mainstream thing that um i don't understand why we can't talk about it as well so that's why we're doing this so that people can understand that we're just like anybody else and people that have been injured especially with spinal cord injuries because that's what i have it is you know just as big of a deal and just as important as it is for regular people not that we're not regular but you know what i mean so I'm a T12 complete paraplegic. Uh, I lose all my feelings starting at about my pubic bone, just under my belly button, so I can't feel anything down there. Um, with that being said, it also means that I can't get an erection either, uh, not on my own. Well, I mean, I can a little bit, oh, but it doesn't. It doesn't stay. So with with that being said, there's a couple of different ways for uh, people that. Uh, have it's basically erectile dysfunction is the way they categorize it. Uh, mine is not dysfunction; it's paraplegia, so it's you know it's paralysis, so it's different. But the same drugs are used um, to across the board pretty much. There's you know oral medications such as Cialis, Viagra, things like that. Uh, I've tried Viagra, but Viagra just doesn't work properly for me. I think it's because my metabolism is really high and it just doesn't it just doesn't last. So the best option for me is um, a concoction known as Trimix, and it comes in a little vial. It's a pre-mixed solution that you have to inject using a diabetic needle um, directly into your penis. Um, and the sorry, can you not laugh? <laughs> when you get prescribed this, you usually have to do it through your urologist. And the first time that you ever inject it is um, actually in the office. They have to do it to you to make sure that you don't have any kind of reactions or it, and it to kind of appropriate your dosage. So definitely recommend doing either what they, do, they prescribe or less. Uh, I use about a third of the dose that they tell me to and I get great results from that so okay so we're gonna go over a little bit of background of us um, just give you a little detail so before we answer any of the questions that have been asked um, let's see we've been dating for about a year now getting close very close 10 11 months yeah um, we have known each other since about sixth grade, middle school time frame. He's actually best friends with my cousin. That's how we know each other. And um, we've been friends pretty much till now. Yeah. So. Okay. So we're going to answer um, some of the questions that we've been asked online and just by uh, friends and family. Very general questions we get all the time. Let's start with Ryder. <clears throat> All right, so we had the question asked, is it as enjoyable as it was before? Um, yes and no. Uh, yes, because um, it's still, I mean, being intimate and having sex is still enjoyable and it's still fun. And um, it's not all about it's the yourself, you know, it's about the other person as well. So as long as it's enjoyable for both people, then it's, yeah, it's still enjoyable. Uh, no, in the fact that um, because I can't feel anymore, I don't, uh, I don't orgasm like I used to. I don't um, physically. That is, uh, it's all more of a mental game for me now. So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> all right. Um, so, do you have any insecurities that I will leave you for an able-bodied person? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't personally. I mean, um, I guess the thought's always kind of been there, but no, I don't concern myself with it. No. No more than. No more. Yeah. No more than any other person that's in a relationship with somebody would be worried that 
that their other is going to cheat on them or leave them. Okay. So one question that was asked uh, more pertaining to Carly is, uh, am I the first person that you have dated since that uses a wheelchair? Yes. You're the first person I've ever really, really known in a wheelchair. Yeah. So definitely the first person I've dated and been with yeah. in a wheelchair. All right, and next question. Do you always have to be on top? All right, so that is actually a pretty common question asked to me specifically. Um, and I, this is something that could be very different per person. Um, I am fortunate enough that Ryder is a very athletic guy and um, has a lower injury point that I do not always have to be on top. Um, that is a common position for us, yes, but it's not the only one, and we can definitely experiment and do a little other things as well, so that's good. Not a little. I'd say it's a good 50-50. <laughs> right. right. I'm trying. I do as much work as she does. Come on now. Give me some credit. <laughs> All right. Um, how did your friends and family react when you told them that I was in a wheelchair? Okay, um, so they all reacted about the same. Um, being that, over this topic, they were all very curious on how things were going to work. Um, a lot of people want to know if I take care of you in any way, which is not the case at all. I don't take care of Ryder at all. He's very independent. Um, so they were, they had a lot of questions, but most of them knew Ryder and knew that it wasn't going to be any issue or really that big of a deal. All right. <laughs> Another common question that we both get is, um, like, back to the position, like, if she's always on top and whatnot. Um, no, we both pretty much try to just change it up as often as possible. And, um, you know, everybody's going to be different. That's the one thing that I say all the time is that everybody's injury is different and, and people are always going to react differently and have different capabilities and, and different side effects and things like that. Luckily, I don't have any kind of spasms or anything like that, so I don't really have a whole lot to restrict me from trying um, other positions and trying different things. Um, so I'm able to... I was going to say something very important with that is just communication, knowing... Um, what your partner is comfortable with, what you're both comfortable with. And being open to yeah, each other. Yeah, you have to be open in a situation as this because if you're not, then you don't enjoy it. Things don't, you can't realize your potential. So yeah. it's very important to well, talk it's a, and it's experiment. A, that, it's important because, um, you know, the only, the places on somebody's body that turn them on, you know, generally people think it's just, you know, down there and whatnot. But for me, because I don't feel down there anymore. <laughs> anymore um my upper body is more heightened sensitivity than it used to so like it's like my side on my scar is really the strange one that's it's hypersensitive and it's uh, it's the it's that openness and trying like to feel out what uh what helps turn the other person on and get you know get them going so Um, another thing is people often want to know if we have to use any kind of equipment or if we have any kind of special uh, stuff that helps us have sex. Um, Such as like um, wedge it, like the sex wedges, yeah. chairs, equipment Swings, like that. Yeah. Stuff like that. And yes, we actually do. We have a chair and we will show you that in just a minute. Um, not going to use it. This is all talk. There's no acting out. So this is, uh, I'm not exactly sure of the brand of it, but it is a, a glider chair, um, and it is made to help those with paralysis um, have sex, uh, in the fact that they don't have the leg movement or the leverage that they did before. So you basically just sit in it, and the way that it coasts, it goes in a straight line, instead of you know like a regular rocking chair that go like this, in order to basically help you thrust. Big part of it as well is 
the safety aspect. Um, obviously, he can't feel his legs or anything like that, so we need to be careful in what positions we can do, um, what we're currently doing, um, just making sure that his legs are not in any weird position, um, they're not rubbing against something, falling off the bed. Making sure that my my butt's not rubbing yeah. too much and creating like carpet burn and stuff like that because you know, I can't feel it, I have no idea. Um, it's just important to remember the same and take the same precautions that you would, you know, regularly, but a little bit more intensely because it's it's you know active. So that friction is really not a good thing for your skin if you're if you're not careful. Yeah. <laughs> Woman. So that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you have any other questions, just comment them, and we will try to answer them as well. Uh, as you can see, the video is already almost 11 and a half minutes long, so...